afternoon. We're bringing you the second episode of Classroom Management, which is all about disciplinary interventions. What that means is, what do you do when students would still break the rules that we talked about in the first episode? So you're not going to really be having a goal like I need to get a ready-made great class. Our goal should be how can I cultivate a good class? We've talked about rules and procedures. Today we're talking about disciplinary interventions. And then the next couple, two episodes would be dealing with the other two factors of classroom management. But today we're talking about disciplinary interventions. What that simply means is, what do we do when our students break the rules that we have so considerately really framed, taking everybody into confidence? Now, there are two, two things that we need to keep in mind. One is that there cannot be just punishment, punishment, punishment for some of the children like we tend to do and we've seen it happening right since our childhood. Some children are always punished. Some children are always getting rewards. But what research is telling us is that there has to be a balance of punishment and rewards. That's one thing to keep in mind. So whenever students are on good behavior, that's easy, right? Because we give them all kinds of smileys and gift cards and tokens and motivation marbles, anything which is tangible, which they can take home. Now, what's being said about classroom, about disciplinary interventions is that there are teachers need to know what are the strategies that need to be called out when they see behavior which is not acceptable in the classes. And this has to be there throughout the school. Every teacher follows the same norm. It has to be made visible to the parents. There has to be no favorite teacher or a popular teacher. Everyone acts with the same thumb rule. There are two good ideas there. One is called overcorrection. Now, intuitively, it's not so easy to understand what this means. It definitely doesn't mean that you keep correcting and correcting and correcting the work of the students. But here's the thing. What it means is that when your student errs on something, let me give you an example. I'll illustrate with a very common example. The child might issue a book from the library or from your resource center and will bring it back in tatters. What do you normally do? You find the child, ask the child to replace the book. In no way are you really reforming the child's behavior, punishing the parents. So you might go a little bit ahead and you might say, okay, you've torn this book, sit down, mend it. Here is fevicol, here is tape, bind it and so on. But when you're practicing overcorrection, what's recommended is that while the student is quietly and hopefully meditatively repairing the book, you give another three or four torn books from your shelf, which the student hasn't torn, but you tell her or him, why didn't you mend these also? What this means is correcting more than the fault. Teachers are reporting that when they practice this, students are unlikely to repeat the same error again. There's another great idea which you might have heard of, which is known as isolation time out. What this means really is that when students are misbehaving inside the classroom, move them out physically from that space. Not just make them stand out like used to be done in old times or in positions. I will not do this again. I will not do this again, which is meaningless. But move them to a place which is quiet and which has adult supervision. An isolation space. But here's the thing. It's not just that the student is sitting there doing nothing. You give a paper and pen and ask this child to write down why did she or he do whatever they did. What were their motivations, desires, anger, jealousies, hatred, animosity, hostility that they have been feeling pent up in them. So it's in, in a way, it's a cathartic activity because they bring it all out on paper. If they're not going to be able to write, some teacher can ask them to speak to them about this. This is a practice that is used for reforming human behavior. Psychologists are recommending this. So because you get them to take it out, they feel free, light, and they are ready to sort of go back to the class, fulfilled with more energy. So isolation, time out, and overcorrection. These are two disciplinary interventions we recommend, but you must also use tokens for good behavior whenever you see it. For all the children, so there has to be a balance of both. You certainly do not want a class with mayhem like this. So using good strategies for correcting inappropriate behavior is what the second factor of classroom management is talking about. 
If you like what Shikshangan is presenting through these YouTube videos, do like and do subscribe to our channel. Write to us if you want to read more material on this. We'll be only too happy to share it with you. Till we meet again, thank you.